Hey everybody, welcome back. ES broke 4200, cannot hold 4216. We're gonna talk about what that means. You can see this trend line developing and you can see this channel. One thing we keep hearing about is, is this going to be some kind of you know, cup? We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, is this DTL gonna hold? I don't think it is, but we're going to get into this. We had some really interesting moves today, and we had some really interesting moves after hours, especially with Amazon and Intel both up, which is the exact opposite of what we saw earlier this week. And there's some things about that that we have to talk about. I mean, Google absolutely plummeted. Meta, Microsoft, we're going to talk about it. And after hours, we've got a couple that are down. So I apologize for starting late this evening, but uh, I wanted to go through these, and I wanted to listen to parts of the Amazon conference call before I did that. We're going to get into it. But you can see your head and shoulders here that finally did crack. The uh, head and shoulders gang was eventually right. We did break here. But let's drill into this a little bit on the hourly first so we can see what's going on. Um, I do have some trades I want to walk through. I'm probably going to do it in Saturday's video just for the time constraint this evening. I like to keep that video to macro, but there's some really good teaching lessons. I'm going to go over a couple of those teaching lessons tonight, but there's some really good live trades I was asked to show and um, walk through, and I'm going to do that as well. I don't really feel like we're fitting in here, and I just want to point that out. I really don't feel like this is a true channel. So I think if, even if you try to move it up, I just don't really feel the channel here at all, and I think that's important. So I think that this has some room to kind of figure out what it's going to do. I don't think we're set up as a true channel just yet, and I think that's a very important distinction. Why is that important? Because when you have these channels, you can kind of get a predictor on where the other side of that room is, right? And when you're there, and you, you just don't have that right now, and I think that's a very important distinction. For example, if you come here, and let's take the top of this and drill that down, and then if you clone this right here, and you drop this down, you're gonna see a channel right here. And you can see that, right? We don't have that here. We don't have anything to find yet. So this kind of ties in with that 4115 level that you're already down around, and everybody's kind of aware that's already there. I'm sure you guys are aware of this, but let's point it out so that we know what to look for tomorrow. And we can kind of see that area. Drop this in real quick and there. But if you look where you're at right now and you come right down to watch this level right here, 42.15, and you'll see it right here. See these levels right here? See how you're fighting in here, holding in here, holding in here? That takes you to the bottom of that channel. I think that's where we're heading. I think that's where we could find some support. We've come down a lot in a very short period of time. You have to realize that, you know, in mid-October, meaning last week, you were at 4,400, we're at 4,140. That's a really, really big drop. 6% is where you're at uh, in that week. That's not a small drop, guys. So there's some kind of bounce that's out there that we're gonna have to pay attention to. When it's coming, I don't know. Now, based upon the timing of this video tonight, I will make this one quick so that we can get it out. I do think it's interesting that we are back on the four hour below the RSI here. I do think it's interesting that you have a positive divergence here. And you never know how this is going to play out because you had Amazon tonight, ENPH tonight, Intel tonight. We should get, we're going to get into those. But when you're seeing uh, how this is playing out this evening, it's, it's very different when we get into the after hours trading. But take a look at this divergence. Now, usually I say, well, we need to see this hold and, and make the higher high. Well, if we look at what's happening here, we're already kind of there. Now, I'm saying kind of because I'm taking poetic license. But you see how you down, up, over. You're over here, and now we have this, and we have here. So we're developing a positive divergence. Well, that's very different than what we've had before, and I think we need to pay attention to it. I mean, we are oversold from the standpoint of, my gosh, I mean, it's just, it's cotton, constant. Like, everyone's a, a brilliant short seller all of a sudden, and we all know that we're not brilliant. So we need to understand that there's probably some kind of bounce out there. Um, and I think that, that it's sooner than later. And I just want to hammer this point home before we move on. Let's get into the NQ on the four hour, get to that. And then I really want to talk about these four or five names that you need to watch tomorrow and then who's coming out with earnings so that you guys have a game plan for tomorrow. Guys, in the general sense, obviously we have a lot of women that watch our videos, which is actually kind of cool. It's like triple the average. So here's our neckline broke. I think we're heading to this 14 is where we're going. 14.2, did it hold? No, it didn't. We went through it like, you know, machete paper. So there you are. What is that? Paper? I forget what that paper was called. I thought it was called machete paper, but it's called something else. Type in the comments what it's called. I don't, I don't have time to edit that out. So here you are. And you see your line right here. Tissue paper. But I was thinking it's called something else. Like when you used to make something with paper. If, you're, if you know what I'm talking about, drop a comment in. But you see our levels right here? You see how we're dropping? 
So we're going to want to watch this and we're going to want to pay attention to that 14,250 level and see how it goes. I think we're okay there if we can hold. We did go through it awful fast today and I'm going to reiterate this like tissue paper. So it's definitely something that I want to watch. I don't trust it. I really don't trust anything right now. But if I look at this, we can kind of see how we're we're setting up here and I think this is something that you want to pay attention to. You certainly want to pay very, very close attention to how this is shaping up here and if we get to that 14. Now, a couple things. You have PCE tomorrow at 8.30. I don't know how PCE comes out. PCE could come out higher for sure. We just don't know how that's going to play. On top of that, on top of PCE, you have some other data that you have to look at. You're going to have the super majors are going to come out tomorrow. You're going to have them all come out with earnings. Exxon's going to come out with earnings. You have a bunch of them that are going to be out there tomorrow. You're going to want to see how they all play out. This is going to be big. You're going to want to watch XLE. You're going to want to listen to what they're talking about, the draws. You're going to want to listen to what they're talking about, demand overseas and what issues they see developing geopolitically. And that can move oil. Oil can move the S&P. For me, before we even get into the names, let's just deal with being be kept in obvious here. We're not holding any level, but the 444 level, look where we're at after hours. Now we're up, and the reason that we're up is because of Intel of all names. Now this is somewhat surprising to all of us, myself included, because I thought that this quarter was going to be a dumpster fire, and it is not a dumpster fire. Matter of fact, it's the exact opposite. So you're rallying pretty substantially here after hours. Does this hold? I don't know. But, you know, we think that it's not going to. And here we are and we're bouncing on earnings. So leave this in pre and post. Look at the undercut here at 17. And we never got below that. Never got below that level. I mean, I do use RSI a lot and there's a reason for it. I, you know, you do want to watch how these things are trading. But we have a bunch of names that I think are more important for us to focus on here. Let's start with the ones that have already come out. Now, why are we doing these? Because I think it's important to understand this is an insane drop for Google. Like, we have not had a drop. I just want to be clear about this drop on Google. You have not had a drop like this on Google since the pandemic. This is just, it's a massive, massive drop. And it's because a lot of people are in there and they're locking in their year. I'm not saying that you're going to just miraculously bounce back up on earnings like you did here and everything's going to be, you know, fine. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that this is an insane amount for this stock to drop in this short period of time. You're gonna see in a moment here why I'm one reviewing charts so that you have some kind of prep tomorrow even before the pre-market. Look at how we're already rolling here. Look at how this is already turning. Let's get rid of the pre and the post. See where you're at, you're already starting to turn. These, these kinds of readings are beyond rare when you're down here. They're not normal readings when you're down here. I can't get rid of that thing right now. So you can see right here, you're just, they're just not normal. So bear with me as I make this video. I'm in between a uh, really long day today and just tons and tons of trading listening to conference calls. So you see also in here, now look at where you are. It just seems like it's completely overdone to some extent and there might be something out there. Now, now take a look at Meta today. Meta was actually one that we shorted and did exceptionally well with. Uh, within, you know, we had this talk this morning about it. I'm gonna play some of that live uh, on this Saturday's video and go over this in greater detail. But we, right off the open, we shorted it. Here's a screenshot from the room. Again, I'll show you the live trade this weekend. You can learn a lot from it. And I, I do wanna walk through something that, I, I, there's something I showed you earlier in the week on how you could profit after hours. And I wanna show it to you again here live so you can see it. Uh, but IBM is one I had a long on. Uh, I had a NVIDIA short and I had some puts and I was just being really clear I wasn't closing them. Uh, and this is just some, one of the guys that's helping out in the room. He types why I actually live trade. And then this just denotes that it's an alert. We'll close high of the day. I did it right off the open. Boom. And that was it. It was, it was so obvious to me. Uh, I'll, I can last second leave that up. And then we just wrote it down and I'll show the trade live. But we made like $10. It was crazy. <clears throat> Pardon me. Same thing with NVIDIA. It was a really easy trading day. And these names, look how this worked. So one of the things I want to go over with you guys is when you have a one minute long bar like this on news, forget fib levels for a second and just do yourself a favor. Measure that bar out. Where do you see this? It's going to be crazy how obvious this becomes. Let's drop this down here for a minute. Look at that 50% level off the one minute bar. Look at how that became your mark. So here again. So this gave us another opportunity to actually short it again. We played around with these a lot today. 
but this actually gave us another opportunity later in the day to short it. Now, again, you probably want to do something like this similarly with some of the ones that came out with earnings tonight and take a look and see how they do. But the question is, what do you do now? Let's clean all this off and drop this down. And just bear with me, you can comment below on how rough this video is. Uh, it's obviously pretty rough because we're just going to get it out completely unedited because of time. But again, I'd rather get it out like this. If you want it more polished, just let me know and I can do that instead. But it just, it's just going to take longer and it's not going to have as much detail. So if you could just see the breakdown here, now what would you take away from that bar? What would be the one thing that you'd want to measure on that bar? I'd want to know where the buyers and sellers closed on that bar. So I could do that by measuring the bar and looking at a 50% level. Now, we just want to make sure that our lines are perfect, and they are perfect. You had more net buyers at the end of the day. Now, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? So you say, well, what do you mean you had more net buyers, the open versus the closed? That's fine. I'm talking about during the day, look at what happened and how we closed. Wicks are what? Price rejection, right? It all ties together, guys, everything we go over. I'm not going to bring out the stool and everything else right now, but you get what I'm putting down. What does that mean? You might want to watch this tomorrow and see if we have a little bounce. Now, you're going to have a lift tomorrow going into PCE, and we don't know how PCE is going to be. I have my opinion on PCE. It's usually smoother, and it's a little more tied to rents, and it drags on rents. So I think it's going to play catch up. I think it'll be okay. It's an opinion. That's all it is. That and a bowl of soup gets me a bowl of soup. But you're going to want to watch this tomorrow. Let's get into the, some, some of the ones that actually are significant. Number one. ENPH, lowered guidance, this sector's toast. You're down $17, you're missing on the revenue site. Gross margins were an absolute dumpster fire. Okay, so let me clean all this off for a second and just show you that chart and show you where you're gonna open. So I want you to just, the reason I'm showing you this is you're gonna open on major support, 78.45. That's right where you stopped. If you wanna get into this and look at this, it's always so interesting to me how this works, but look at that. Isn't that crazy? 78.45, look how you held there. Look how crazy that is. Tell me technical analysis doesn't work. Tell me that in the comments. <laughs> see what's going on here? Try to make you laugh, but see what's going on here? August, 2000, three years ago, and we're stopping. We're stopping from August, 2020, just to be clear on this, after hours. It's, cr it's absolutely crazy to me. Watch this on a one. Look at that, on one minute bar, right? And you see I drew it on the weekly before I dropped it. It's, it's just absolutely insane. You're gonna wanna watch 78.40 tomorrow, 78.45. If you do not break that, what do you wanna do? You probably wanna close your short, right? Something to think about. Again, dumpster fire. The whole sector is one big dumpster fire. Did I say the word dumpster fire enough? S-E-D-G-R um, or S-E-D, S-D-G-R. I wanna go through this name real quick. I know it has nothing to do with this, but this kind of stuff, start watching. They're going to start tax selling these names, and I wanted to put this one out there while I was thinking about it. I want you to get this with a lot of these names. They're going to just be outright tax sales to the end of the year. Another one someone brought up in the room today, and they're 100% right, ZM. Start looking for tax sales, guys. you got eight weeks left in the market. Some of these names we're going to go over on Saturday in great detail. Make sure you watch that video. But let's segue back here. But do look at that SDGR and do look at Zoom tomorrow. Both of those are setting up to go a little bit lower. And then we're seeing this with SEDG. This is going to take out that low. I can't even zoom in on these charts. They're so bad. TAN in and of itself is going to have a really, really bad day. Now, let's start going through the good news. Intel is actually trading up 7.5%. And it was not really that bad of a call. Now, this is somewhat surprising because everyone was waiting for this to be a dumpster fire. It was not. Look at their earnings. They crushed. Look at their revenue. They're absolutely crushing. So do I think you need to buy it? No, you're going to open right into 35. I think it might pull a Microsoft. We're going to have to see what happens with PCE and how the whole market holds up. We are grossly overdone. Futures are up at the time of recording this. And we are seeing some movement after hours in some of the bigger players that we're about to go through. But you're coming in right into the crux of a lot of levels here, guys. This is going to open up into the trend line, into resistance, into the 12, the 55, and the 22. None of that should make you feel warm and fuzzy. None of it, all right? So that's definitely something that we're gonna wanna pay attention to and we're gonna wanna see how this plays out, okay? I can't stress that enough. We're gonna wanna watch that and we're gonna wanna see how it plays out and kinda go from there. I don't really think that there's a, a huge need for us to do a lot there. So that said, keep that in mind. Now, in regards to Intel, great guidance, great quarter. Technically, you're coming into a nightmare. Basically, what we refer to as a kill zone. So I don't think there's a tremendous amount 
that you want to do there with that particular name. I do think that you should be paying attention to names like NVIDIA that are up $6 after hours. And now you're going to be asking yourself, okay, are we going to gap up tomorrow now because of this? I have no idea. You could be up after hours right now and then some other news hit overnight and then the whole market goes against us. Remember, you still have all the geopolitical events. But yeah, yeah, you had a huge move down. A lot of people are short and they were short because of Intel going into the quarter. It's ENPH that's the problem. Tesla in and of itself, uh, you did break that year-to-date VWAP and I do want to go through this. You're going to want to watch this tomorrow, guys. If you can't hold here, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a real issue. On top of that, the way that I see this is you're going to want to look at semis tomorrow because of Intel, because of KLAC, which of course you saw today. And are we going to see some kind of bounce? I don't know because KLAC crushed. Now, it didn't have the negative connotation that Intel had, but it absolutely crushed. Now, take this out for a second and overlay this with Amazon, which was the big surprise of the evening. So Amazon was positive, welcoming news for once. And now look at this. And this is really what I wanted to go over with everybody. Let's clean this off for a second, drop that down, make this a one minute chart, and then we'll get into this. Now, what I wanted to focus on, and people are aware of this that are in the trading community, and if you've been watching some of these videos, we were short this. This, was, this provided, I, I walked through this after hours anchored VWAP a lot. I actually posted about it. We were short right in here, and it was a perfect setup. You could not get over that anchored VWAP. Remember, Drop an anchored VWAP on all your trades. Where do you see what I'm about to show you? If you get nothing else from this video and this rant, you pay attention to this. You see how you're acting right in here, right? All right, and then you crack and you break down. You try to get through. Cannot get through this. This was glaring. It was an easy spot to put the short on. Put the short on. All of a sudden, we're trimming the whole way down. You get here. Can't break. Can't break what? What do we always mark? The first bar. We always mark the first bar, right? Well, we say that, mark the first bar, the highs and the lows. You wanna know where all those players are. Here's where they're at and look at what we're doing. Okay, so now we have this coming straight across. Look what you couldn't get over. And they come out and start talking about AWS and how great AWS is and how well it's doing and how it's advancing and it's beating expectations. In two minutes, you go from 118 to what? 123. This is why you must trim after hours. We trimmed three times, or I trimmed three times in here and showed it in the uh, community. I should probably pull that up. But this is just the observation room. It's just showing that Intel was up, ENPH was up, uh, Amazon, I'm sure I'm just stating that I'm short. We were already talking about it in the Stock Talk Only room, but I wanted to show why and walk through it. You can kind of see how that's acting right there. And then I'm just talking about up two bucks and then I I'm trimming. Okay? And then I'm getting to these levels and I'm trimming and trimmed into the breakout bar, second trim, right? And that's really what you're focused on. Where am I supposed to be trimming? And you're watching the trade the whole time. Uh, 118.52 was the next trim. You can see that right there. You can see the timestamps. Rocking with the rest to break even. Stop was break even. When this happened, after that news hit, my stop was no longer break even. And then we start flipping. So we're flipping it. Now what flipping it means, and someone new asked in the room, uh, what does flipping it mean when we say flipping? Um, if we make the higher high, shorts were panic. Guess what we did? We made that higher high. And then they start looking for stock. Now, what do I mean when I say they're looking for stock? Here, watch this. Look what they do with this bar. Look how they rip you up and then they bring it back down. But look at the wicks. Wicks are what? Price rejection. Then they rip it up and then they do what? They come down, but it doesn't stay down. Why is this important? Because wicks are what? Price rejection. So they're looking for stock. They're ripping it down, trying to figure out who, who, what poor soul stock they can take from them. And then they rip it up. This told you to go long. This was glaring. So just this little line alone and putting an after hours anchored VWAP and knowing how to read the tape, you could have had a very, very nice, in my opinion, very nice after hours, and I did. Now, this was very different than trying to trade ENPH after hours, but that said, I wonder if there's a way to look at ENPH and see if there was any kind of level that we could have utilized to determine where to be short that. Do you think maybe here? on the anchored VWAP, or maybe here you could have put that short on with the anchored VWAP. So guys, don't make it complicated. It's actually understanding what these things are, and then when you understand what they are, you can figure out ways to utilize them to your advantage, okay? Here we were, very clearly, I wanted to short Intel. Now, I don't have a long position in Intel because I have my resistance right up here. I had that kill zone, remember I pointed at that earlier? Why didn't I short in here? 
because I closed, but then what? Wicks are what? Wicks are price rejection. So even though I'm getting this wonky move down, I'm not really getting anything. I'm rejecting off of here. We're going into the call. They're talking. I'm watching. I'm looking for that follow through bar. Do I get it? Nope. I rip higher. Okay. Retest. Rips higher. Wicks are what? Price rejection. So this kept me out of a trade. Didn't know, they don't always have to keep you in. Sometimes they will keep you out. I hope you found this helpful. Please comment on this. Please share it if you did. That's it.